Floss here. Welcome back. I am Jenny. This is my channel, Stitching Jenny. This is Floss Tube number 20. Today is September 30th, 2024. Um, it's been just over two months since I last filmed. I've had a lot of things going on. Um, last time I talked to you, my brother-in-law had had surgery to remove a brain tumor that he had. Then when I had filmed, like I had just, my daughter had just gotten her wisdom teeth out. She did well, um, had no issues. And then my dad that weekend had a heart attack. So that Sunday morning, right after I filmed, and uh, that was pretty scary. And he ended up having two stints placed in his heart and was in the hospital for oh, a couple of days. So I went and helped him and my mom for a few days. And then the next week, my sister who uh, was pregnant, she um, was having high blood pressure issues the next week, but she's in Canada. And then the following week they hospitalized her. Well, she was hospitalized that week for her high blood pressure. They got that under control, sent her home. And then she went back and was having issues with the baby not getting enough blood. And she had to go in several times and then they finally ended up keeping her at the hospital and then she finally ended up having her baby at the end of august yeah end of august and so she is in the NICU and like doing phenomenally well all things considering considering she was two months old and only two pounds when she was born so then also in the middle of all that school started I'm working more hours than I have in years past which <laughs> it's hard when you're used to only so many hours it's only um like an extra half hour a day but with all the timing of everything it's tricky my my middle daughter got a job as a custodian at our school and so I come home for maybe a half an hour 45 minutes and then I have to take her back over to the school anyway it's just been hard to get it back but um anyway just a hard July <laughs> and um a hard few weeks trying to just adjust so I um, have a lot to show you, even though I haven't done a lot of stitching in the last month, which <laughs> you'll see in my numbers. But anyway, welcome back. Thanks for being patient. And I have a lot to show you. It's going to almost be like a whip parade because I have so many things. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I want to um, do some stitchy kindness that... I've received since the last filming. First of all, I participated in Christy Java Girl Stitches. Um, it was It Be Tuesday South, where you stitch uh, bee-themed cross-stitch. And she did it with Anna Rote, who is a good friend of mine. And I participated partly because I have so many bee patterns because my husband's a beekeeper and partly to support them but uh, I ended up winning one of their prizes so this is a cross stitch bag from Joyful Stitching and uh, it's a large vinyl front bag beautifully um, there's some like quilting and uh, just straight quilts and um, she included a couple of flosses as well as this beautiful mini accessories bag. And she does her, her stitching. I, I've sewn vinyl front bags 
and she uses a great thick vinyl thicker than I've even used and she has some really great padding in the back if you like vinyl front bags I highly recommend joyful stitching uh, it's beautifully sewn better than I I could ever begin to do and um, she has it looks like an Etsy store joyful stitching store so if you want to take a screenshot I'll put that up but just beautiful so I appreciate Christy and Anna for gifting that to me as well as joyful stitching I will I will try it and link her shop below so if you're interested uh, check the notes below and I will try to include a link to her shop because like I said definitely beautiful high quality work highly recommend highly recommend um, joyful stitching then I had a neighbor call me on Saturday saying that she knew someone who was giving away some cross stitch books would I be interested I said sure not knowing what there would be. <laughs> this is heavy. Look at all those books. And um, there's some really great, beautiful pieces in here. There's a gorgeous, let's see, a gorgeous stocking book um, that has some great pieces in it. I haven't looked through all of it. The one that I am most excited about currently is a Precious Moments chart that has, so my mom collected Precious Moments when I was young and had so many pieces, but this chart has the nativity in it as well as the wise men and my mom has a nativity um, music box of the precious moments that I have loved since I was little and so I thought I would I definitely want to stitch those I've actually looked for the chart a few times and they're hard to find. That chart, that particular book is not in the greatest condition, but the others, they're in fantastic condition. So um, I do have um, a few of those that I can look through. So anyway, I was really excited to get that. Uh, I thought I would look through them and talk to my sister and a couple of friends and see if they want any of it and anything that's left over I will take to Stitch West with me because they will have a freebie table um, and put that on that donation table. So uh, if you're going to Stitch West you might benefit from this neighbor. Um, so that's my stitchy kindness. So on to fully finished objects, FFOs. I met up with my friend Colette, the highway stitcher. She asked me if I would help her with a couple of finishes. Um, she hasn't really done a lot of fully finishing herself and asked if I would help her. Those are gifts or exchange pieces for her. So. I, I do have a picture of them, but I'm going to wait until she has gifted those before I, I show it. But um, it was really fun. She actually lives in the same town that I do, and so it was really fun to meet up with her. I have followed her for several years um, before COVID hit, and we were supposed to get together and go stitching before but it just never worked out between COVID and then I started working and um, so it was actually really fun to be able to finally meet her in person at Stitch West but um, 
I look forward to getting together with her again. We've decided that next time I do a, a fully finishing day that I would invite her over. So, um, I did fully finish a couple of things kind of late at night. So this first one is Harvest, no, it's called Pumpkin Kisses by Primrose Cottage. And um, this is my finish. And it's an easel back finish. So kind of like a flat fold, but with just a smaller piece. This is trickier than a flat fold. So if you have never done a flat fold, I would suggest starting with that. I just like that this takes less material, um, both in the boards as well as um, the fabric. So I've kind of started doing these because I like the idea of a flat fold and I think they look so pretty. So that is that piece I used um, some fabric that I bought specifically for this, but I didn't have the piece with me and it was from Pine Needles, uh, a quilting, they have a little bit of cross stitch more so now that one of our stitching stores closed. Um, but anyway, I stitched this on 32 count white chocolate Zweigart linen and I think this one I used all the call for colors or similar tones if I didn't. And then I used some, some French knots for the corn. I saw, I think it was Country Stitchers years ago, who um, used French knots for the corn on knee high by the 4th of July by hands on design. It's, it's a patriotic piece that has like corn and then I think it has a barn with a quilt. Um, but she did hundreds of French knots for the corn and I thought it looked so neat. It's a little harder with such a small piece to really see the impact of it. But anyway, it was a fun one to, to practice my French knots on, I guess. Um, the next fully finished piece is, um, Happy Harvest by, uh, Cherry Hill Stitchery. And this is that finish. This is just a really, really simple finish. I thought about putting, um, something around the stitching but ended up just really liking the simplicity of this. I typically don't go quite this simple, but I actually really liked it. This is a fall piece that I got last year from Hobby Lobby and it has like a little plaque in the center that said something. So I just glued this stitched piece to that plaque and called it good. So and it has an easel back, so that's really handy. And again, I'm pretty sure that I used all of the call for colors. Um, but if you go to my Instagram, I always put what my color changes, if I have any, are. So there's that finish. So those were my two finishes. Um, then let's see as far as finished but not fully finished items I have two <laughs> I did a lot of whip stitching and new starts so I don't have a ton of finishes obviously this one and those two fall pieces they were from last year that I stitched those so this first one is I Love Fall Most of All by Primrose Cottage. And this was a new start and a finish. And it, I, I kind of changed some things up. 
Um, I changed, I think it was supposed to be Fallen Leaves for the, for the orange pumpkin. And I changed it to, I think it's Sweet Potato. I will put it in when I post, um, on Instagram about it. And then this I changed to Weeks Amber because I wanted a more sunflowery color. And then I just bought a bunch of like this kind of royally, like a dark royal blue, um, like fall pieces. I have some that are kind of a dusty blue gray and then some that are this dark kind of royal blue. And so I'm stitching this in colors that match those pieces so that it will, will flow better. And so I changed this to that darker color. And this pumpkin is supposed to be the same color as this, but a gold pumpkin wasn't really what I was looking for. So I did that lighter kind of blue gray color that matches other pumpkins that I have. But I think the rest is all called for. So I'm excited to finish that and put it out with my new fall, fall colors. Um, let's make a new pile. So many piles, guys. So many piles. Okay, then my other finish was Nativity Biscornu by Fuzzy Fox Designs. Um, I forgot to mention. Okay, so I did write down. So this is Weeks Amber. Um, the dark blue is DMC 311. Then this is Weeks Sweet Potato. And then the lighter blue gray is DMC 931. And then it's on, stitched on 32 count country French latte linen. So you can kind of see that it's kind of a little more cream color. Really pretty. Really excited with how that one turned out. So then this is Fuzzy Fox Designs Nativity Biscor New. This is the top. It is stitched on 32 count dove even weave. And there will be some gold beading that goes kind of around the star. This part I already had finished. So I was working on the lower part, which is the shepherd. And this is stitched on 32 count olive green. So then I need to add those beads and then stitch them together, kind of in that fun Biscorn New style, which I've never done before. So that should be fun, interesting. I always get stressed to do new finishes. I don't know. I just, it makes me a little anxious. Um, and next up are my new starts. I have one, two, three, four, five, five new starts since last time. This first one is Trick or Treat Costume Club by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And I need a bigger board for it. Okay, and this is where I'm at. And I don't know if you can tell, but this fabric has that shimmer sparkles to it. Uh, the fabric is River Sticks by Under the Sea Fabrics. This I bought at Stitch West last year. Um, this piece there's a second piece that I've actually already stitched. So this is a bunch of kids all dressed up in Halloween costume. And it actually looks like this. Uh, 
Um, I don't plan on filling in the little waist edge with the different colors. It's supposed to kind of look like candy corn. And I think I'm just going to leave them empty. And then I need to get back to stitching the, the little kids dressed up in their Halloween costumes. This is, um, so I did the Summer Olympics, stitch the Summer Olympics. And this piece I used for three of those Summer Olympic prompts. So opening ceremonies, do a new start. And then I did Olympic rings, a color from the Olympic rings. I, I did black because there's a ton of black in it. And then let's see what was the last one. Rowing, a row or a border. And so obviously <laughs> there's a, a border. So I, this is a piece that I've had for a long time that I was trying to find the right fabric or thought about dyeing fabric for. And so really just wanted to, to get working on it. So I did it for several nights for my, um, Olympics, Titch the Summer Olympics. So I will be getting back to all of my Halloween whips this month. How I don't know which, how how much how many I'll get close to finishing. I am trying to decide. But my next new start was Old oh Holy Night, and this was going to be like my Sunday stitch, and I just haven't super gotten back to it. I've stitched it a few times, but. This is by Emily Call, and this is what it looks like. And I decided to stitch it on a navy Lugana. This is a 28 count, and um, I used it for one Olympic themed, let's see, which one was it? It was Stitch a Favorite Designer, and I have a lot of favorite designers, so I narrowed it down to two things. One, someone that I've met in person. I met her at Stitch West. I had followed her patterns before that, but was excited to meet her. And then two, I didn't want to start something new. And so I just did something that I already had started and, um, this was on hand. It was all stitched up like it had already been started. It was in the cue snap. It was ready to go. So this was gymnastics. A favorite designer or choreographer was kind of what the theme for that one was. Um, so that is a holy night. And Emily has a great Etsy shop. And I do have some new purchases from her that you'll see. Um, the next, I mentioned that my niece was born. So one that was starting to look like she would be born sooner <laughs> rather than later. She wasn't supposed to be born until October 23rd. So the idea is she'll probably still be in the NICU until October 23rd. Um, so I kind of got a bee in my bonnet and needed to get started on her sampler. So this is like a black and white version of it. And I have all of the animals stitched. So I just need to stitch the upper half, the border, essentially and then chart her name. And this is, ooh, I need the bigger board. This is where I'm at for that. I do still need to do the back stitching on the uh, seahorse. And this is by Anna X-Stitch. 
she sells through another designer shop. Um, I will link it below and, um, uh, really cute. I've stitched the two other pieces. Um, this will be the main piece and I love how quickly the animals come out. They, they stitch up really quickly and they're really cute. So highly recommend Anna X stitch, uh, for cross stitch patterns. This is on a 32 count Lugana that I dyed myself because I was trying to get so much done on this. I used it for four Olympic pieces. Let's see what I ended up doing. I ended up subbing out some that I had originally planned so that I could get. So the equestrian one was stitch an animal. So that one and then there was weightlifting, something I can't wait to stitch. Um, and then modern, mo modern pentathlon as part of a series. So there were, I think it's like nine or something, other smaller pieces that go with this one. So I figured that counted as a series, um, especially because I've already stitched two of them. And then closing ceremonies, the plan with a plan to complete in 2024, which that's the plan. So the plan is to definitely have this done and stitched and hopefully to her by the end of October. Will that happen the way that I've been stitching last month? No, this last month, no. But one can hope that my stitchy bug will kick in and it'll get done. Next was um, Autumn Town by Autumn Lane Stitchery. It is a new start for um, school. And I will, it goes like this. So that's that's my start. Super tiny. But it's supposed to look like this. Um, this is stitched on 36 count. What is it? 36 count moss linen by Seraphim Fabrics. And I have a love-hate relationship. Actually, it's mostly a hate relationship with 36 count. I like the size of how things stitch up on it. But I always feel like two threads are too tight. One thread's not as densely covered as I like. So I started this corner pumpkin, this one, um, with two threads. And then on this but wasn't liking how they were laying. So I stitched this pumpkin with one. You can tell it's a little bit darker than this one. This one's a little brighter because the fabric kind of shows through and makes it a little darker. So yeah, I am replacing most of the, um, over dyed flosses for thread works flosses. And so I wanted to see what those looked like. So instead of going this way, I'm kind of moving up. So I wanted to stitch the tree so that I could see what the yellows were looking like and then move over to the roof line so I could see what the roof was looking like. And I started this because um, Autumn Lane Stitchery, they live in the same town as I do. I've met them on several occasions. They're very kind, sweet people. Erin uh, and Cassandra. They're great. And so I wanted to start this because <laughs> of kind of going back to that favorite designer situation. I had originally planned to do this one um, just because they live close by me. But um, Emily's just like up over the other side of the, the hill from me. Not hill, but like uh, a couple of cities over, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It feels like up the hill, you know, 
But, um, so I definitely wanted to start this partly because it was a piece that I wanted to start for a long time. I love it. It's such a gorgeous pattern. Um, but also because of knowing, um, Autumn Lane's tutorial personally. So there is that one. My next new start is actually, um, an exchange piece. I'm going to show you anyway. I know that's kind of taboo, but do I think many of you are going to Stitch West who watch me? Probably not. I know probably Vicky does, but um, if she decides she wants mine, then that's fine. But <laughs> this is the piece that I'm stitching. And it's called Mosaic Halloween. It's by Twisted Willow Designs. Um... And it's in the Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2020 issue. I have stitched this for myself. I feel like it was kind of an underrated pattern, but I love it. And so I thought someone else might too. So I started this last night. And that's how far I've gotten. And there's like 23, 24 days until Stitch West. So like super close and really excited about it. So I've got almost all of the grass. I have just a few more of the kind of uh, more olive green stitching and then my grass is done and then I'll put in the sunflower and the pumpkin. And mine I turned into just a regular pumpkin instead of a jack-o-lantern. And that's what I plan on doing for this one. So getting rid of the base, essentially. Okay, now for the whips. All of the whips. In fact, I'm gonna move this giant pile. Okay, so that I have room to put the whips when I'm done. Okay, here we go. Um, that, um, Mosaic Halloween, it is stitched on 32 count white chocolate. I apparently have been stitching a lot on 32 count white chocolate. So a lot of these whips have either come from 24 hours of cross stitch or stitch the winter Olympics or not winter, summer Olympics. And, um, this first one is Sleepy Hollow uh, by Cricut Collection. This is, <laughs> this is not the actual pattern. This is my working copy. So this is what it looks like. You start out at the farmhouse and then you cross the bridge into the graveyard uh, with the church. So I've stitched the center piece and I'm working on this piece. I am almost done. This was for a while my uh, 30 minutes a day piece to try to get some of this roof line done. Mm, let's see if this will work. Okay, I think that's all of it in. Um, so I basically went from here all the way up. So that's a good chunk. So I think I have six more rows left of the roof line and then it's done. Um, the roof line is done. There's a couple of chimneys, I think, and then the windows. And I think there's a couple of leaves over here floating that I need to finish, but Basically, once that roof is done, it's like smooth sailing. So my goal is to finish that this month. That's the goal. We'll see if it happens. Um, and then I can start on the churchyard next Halloween. That maybe, maybe a little before. Um, next October, I guess. So I love how cool this piece looks. It is stitched on 28 count picture this plus tarnish. 
and that is probably fairly true there's a little bit of green tint to it like just the tiniest bit and it never shows up um but kind of a a gray blue uh with a little bit of a hints of like an olive green in it but it's really cool really kind of spooky this i used not only for 24 hours of cross stitch my 30 minutes but also two olympic um there was soccer stitched towards a goal and which i would really love to finish this section this year um and then what was the other one olympic village stitch a house and that very much is a very big house so definitely fit both of those so there is that one and I'm just gonna set it on the floor right there okay arctic animal cell by the frosted pumpkin stitchery I am now to this like I am technically one clue behind because um anyway let me just show you what it looks like currently like this. And um, this is where I'm at. Last month we got a puffin, a pair of puffins that go right here. This month is right here is a hair snow hair I think it's called um so I'm technically one full behind but I'm getting close to being two behind so I need to get working on those um maybe that'll be my 30 minutes a day stitch maybe I haven't even been stitching like 30 minutes a day if that's been whatever anyway this is stitched on a 32 count I'm pretty sure. Let me double check. Yes. No, this is 36 count. Oh yeah, that's right. 36 count that I dyed myself because I, I remember now I stitched both of the foxes with one thread and then, or this whole fox with one thread. Didn't love it. Ripped it out. Stitched it with two. My daughter liked it better with two. So that's what we went with. So, yeah, that was when I stitched him twice, essentially. But it's got some really cool up here purples and greens, which we will see next month. Because next month, they've already said, won't have any animals in it. Which makes me think it'll be like the Aurora Borealis that they've hinted at. Basically said it will be in it. So, anyway. I think so far the walrus is my favorite okay my next piece let's see did I use that for any of my Olympics I did not I think it was originally gonna be my animal piece and then I finished it and anyway or it was going to be my cell one and I finished it already okay so the next piece is a kiss for snowman by dimensions this is my oldest whip I don't love stitching this one because it's on crunchy Ada and I don't but this is where I'm at and I got a good chunk of I think his um, scarf part of his scarf Pretty sure that's what I worked on mostly his scarf and then some of this blue in his shoulder area shoulder stomach side anyway this area right here and that I think I did for 24 hours of cross stitch and it looks like there was an Olympic wand for the oldest one of your oldest whips and that was a marathon apparently the marathon themed one so there's that one. Then we have the summer 
section of every season by Tiny Modernist. And that's this one right here. And I'm stitching all of these separate and adding a button to all of them. And uh, I have the spring one totally FFO'd and I have the fall one stitched. I just need to finish it into a pillow and this is where I'm at on the summer piece. And I'll probably take this one to Stitch West because I finished the fall one at Stitch West. So I'll probably finish this one at Stitch West. It was great because it had good chunks of color. Um, so it made it really easy. So this one, I will add a flower button down here. So there's that one. This one, actually, uh, this one is stitched on 32 count Sea Lily by Witch Out. Sea Lily uh, linen. My next piece is Sweet Land of Liberty by Cherry Hill Stitchery. And I need a bigger board. And I'm not going to share a picture of this one because it's basically, it's almost done. So I have there's like a pot here with vines coming out and then this motif repeats, um, I think opposite. So then there's the X's and then the flowers, but, um, there's that one. And this one, I know for sure that I changed the blue. I want to say it's Michael's Navy, uh, because the call for was out of stock when I uh, kitted it up in 2020. This is stitched on Graceful Gray and I used it for the Olympic Patriotic uh, piece, Parade of Nations, stitch a patriotic piece. So that's what I used for that. And it's so close so close but I'm kind of getting to that area that it's a lot of like stitch a few stitches cut it stitch a few stitches cut it and so it's it's slow going but it's so pretty um, my next piece is summer by Cricut collection and this I'm stitching uh, with Belinda Z and we're both working on it. I'm not sure how far she got, but I have gotten, uh, let me show you, sorry. This is where I'm at. I've got the first M and the sunflower. And the sunflower, it's supposed to have another color, like a lighter yellow between the checkers. And I ended up pulling it out because I thought you lost the dimension of the checkerboard. And I really liked how it looked with the blue fabric showing through. So I ended up ripping out the ones that I had done. And then it's ready to now start the next M that goes on this side. So this is stitched on 32 count picture this plus glacier. And I used it for one Olympic prompt and it was stitch something summer. I don't know where it is or what thing it is. I'm just going to kind of move on stitch summer stitch for summer Olympics. That's why. So anyway, there was that one. This next one is Plum Street Samplers American Welcome. Mm, there. And I started down here at the bottom. So this is what you'll see. <laughs> um, 
I'll just lay it across my board because it's not in a Q-snap. And so I've got some of the hills in. I've started, I outlined the water. I've started some of the water. It's hard to tell, so let me point it out. There is the outline of a house right there in Ecru. And then right here, there's a boat started and another sail of another boat started right there. There, I think you can see that. And um, this is a really, really fun stitch. I, it's on 40 count. I don't know if I could do 40 count at a retreat. I don't know if the lighting's good enough, but it would be really easy to just kind of fill stuff in. If I got some of the boats in and just filled in, maybe I'll try it. I don't know. We'll see. But this is on 40 count picture this plus pewter. I used it for one Olympic prompt. It was such something with water. It was probably the swimming. Um, but I love that. Love that. And then the next one is Arctic Animals 2. This it by the little stitcher. This is what it looks like. These are going to be ornaments for my daughter. We have a seal. Mm, yeah. A seal. We've got the puffin. And I'm working on... <laughs> Maybe switch to the smaller board. Then I can actually see what I'm doing. And then we've got the killer well or orca so I just need to do the snow and the snowflakes above it and then the orca is done and the prompt for the Olympics for this one was stitch something round and where the snow globe was round it worked this is on 32 count picture this plus dwarf and these patterns are really, really cute. And again, that one might be a good one to take too because it's a lot of white stitching, but white stitches are kind of tricky. So maybe not. I don't know. Already percolating in my head of what I'm going to take. Let's see. Pilgrims by Lizzie Kate was next. And... This is my working copy, but that's what they look like. Um, Miles is done. I'm working on Priscilla. And um, this is what they look like. So there's them as a couple. Yeah. You can see all that. And then, so where I'm at with Priscilla, I worked mostly on um, this part of her apron. Um, and I think, I don't think I did any of the blue. Hmm. I think I did some of her hat, maybe. I don't remember. It's been too long. But if you'll remember, these I thought looked like drumsticks, like turkey drumsticks. And I'm going to put, <laughs> I'm going to put a stripe on them to make them look like leaves, except for the middle one, because <laughs> I'm going to leave it and make it look like it's a turkey leg, just to help me remember it, because I think it's funny. Anyway, it cracks me up because that's all I can see now. Um, so that's 
uh, the Pilgrims. It's on 20 count coffee tea dyed Monaco. And it was um, one Olympic prompt. It was stitch something with more than one person. This is the only piece that has more than one person. Well, I guess technically I do have the trick or treat costume one that I was doing, but um, anyway, this is the one that came to mind and I would like to finish them this year. So it worked well. My next one is Castle Homecoming by the Frosted Pumpkins to Tree. And this is what it looks like. And it was a stitch along. This is stitch on 40 count uh, bird all that I hand dyed myself. And this is where I'm at. And I worked over here on this side, getting in, let's see, uh, getting in the beginnings of the, um, like the troll in his lunchbox. Right here. There's a lot more stitches than that looks because it's 40 count and it's a lot of color changes. So this one goes kind of slow because of all those color changes. So anyway, this one was the Sal prompt for the Stitch the Summer Olympics. And then I worked on Autumn Quaker by Primrose Cottage. And I stitched it using Fallen Leaves. This is stitched on 32 count, I think, cream. Let's see. 32 count cream, yes. And I'll explain why this has taken me so long. This is what it looks like. I have worked on this large piece right here and added this piece right here. Um, in case you don't notice, look how close to the edge that one is versus this side that has a little more room. I was supposed to have centered it and then it would have been fine. However, when I centered it, I obviously didn't center it super well. And so I ended up stopping last year because I was super frustrated with that and just put it away. So I picked it back up after fully finishing another piece that had kind of a tighter, have a, a tight margin, not quite this tight. Um, but I didn't realize it was a 28 count when I stitched on it. I thought it was 32. And so I ran out. Sorry, my face is super itchy today. Anyway, so... I finally picked it back up and it's starting to flow again. Um, I would have had more done except I got to this corner and realized they didn't match up. So then I had to rip all the way out, all the way over here and restitch it. So that took a couple of days because I was irritated about that too. So anyway, this one's a really pretty one. I really like the color. Um, the ladies up at Shepherd's Bush helped me pick out a fun color because it, they didn't carry, um, the called for floss. It's, uh, one of those harder to get flosses. <sighs> Let's see if it says it's a color in cotton and a lot of places don't carry color in cotton. And I, so they helped me pick out its fallen leaves. I think by weeks. Um, that there. And then my last whip is Haunted House by MP Studios. And this is what it look, will look like. I'm stitching the back of the house. 
This was started with my sister at Stage West last year. And um, really, really easy to stitch. I just wanted to get a working copy of it so that I could mark it up a little easier. So I haven't really worked on it a ton. I took this one day while I was subbing and didn't get as much time in that day. So this is only a couple minutes, probably like 15 minutes worth of stitching. I added a couple of these top darker pinkish tones and the blend. So just on a couple of the letters. So I almost have the word trick or treat. But yeah. So that is <laughs> all the whips. Hope you enjoyed that almost whip parade. Um now really fast. Um Let's see, for 24 hours of cross stitch, I completed 12 hours and 45 minutes. I believe the next 24 hours of cross stitch is sometime this month, or this month, meaning October. I'm already thinking in October. It might be November. It's one of the two, and I don't have it written on my calendar. It's in my phone. Um... Anyway, so 24 hours of cross stitches coming up. As far as my monthly plans, I need to go back and tell you. July, I had two new starts, five finishes, two of my own FFOs, and two for Colette. I stitched 28 of 31 days. I finished both of my whip go goals, um, which was awesome. Um, August, I had three new starts, zero finishes, zero fully finishes, and I stitched 28 out of 31 days, and I got one of my whip go goals met. This month <laughs> is really quite pitiful. Um, I know the month ends today, so I have not super counted it up, but I had two new starts. I had one finish that I love fall. I had two, those two fully finishes. I have two, three more that are in the process of being finished. Um, I just haven't gotten back to them. I stitched, if I stitch tonight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 13 days so far. If I stitch tonight, that's 14. That's the lowest I've stitched in a really long time. The lowest uh, since I've started tracking this year, for sure. I have not touched either of my whips, whip, whip go goals, which, let's see, what were they? Four and 11. Four was, um, Autumn Sky. Which do you think I would have gotten back to that one? I think the ones that I love, I get intimidated by them. And so I don't tend to, because I love them so much, I don't want to mess them up, I think is why. Um, and then 11 was Biscor New Dawn. Yeah, that one wasn't happening. It's over one on like, I think like 32 count. Um, so that didn't happen. I don't know what this month is. I want to say one of them is Raven, which would be perfect. Um, it's one of the Mira, the, I guess technically it's a Nora Corbett, um, witch. And so I do want to pull her out. So that hopefully should be an easy one to do. And I don't remember what the other number was because I didn't write them down. So, um, I guess you'll find out next time. Um, so that's my monthly update. I do have a lot of purchases. So a new creation studio did a July, like a Christmas in July sale. And I bought three of her nativity cross stitches. Uh, Lamb of God, Love Has Come, and Prince of Peace. 
and that's what those look like. Then Emily Call had an anniversary, a shop anniversary sale. And so I bought Cozy Autumn Medley, which is one of her new pieces. I Am Loved and Garden Ghost, which is another one of her new pieces. And that's what these look like. Uh, maybe I'll take Garden Ghost. I don't plan on stitching like all around it. I plan on stitching like just the ghost. And I might kind of darken up those colors a little bit. I also have um, Abby at Top Knot Stitcher. She had a Christmas in July sale as well. So just really quick, I bought Spring Rabbit Pillows. Uh, this is by Tiny Modernist. Cotton Pixels Flight Through the Night. This one's kind of weird because the cat is done in beads. I will just be stitching that. Uh, Plum Street Samplers Stars. Scattered Seed Samplers Shelter from the Storm. And I plan on brightening up those colors. So like a bright red, pretty browns. Then Blue Flower Quilting Bee. So this outside is just like a fabric. It's not the actual piece. The actual piece is like that, actually. Um, so that's those. Then I placed an order to Fat Quarter Shop. And they had a group of, are they fat quarter? It's a fat quarter bundle. And they are fun, like, baking, Christmas baking themed patterns. Look how cute. Ugh! A lot of, like, gingerbread uh, peppermints. This one is, like, a mixing bowl mixer. Um, like recipes for gingerbread cookies. Um, just super cute. This same pattern, I think, similar to this same in a couple of different colors. The white and the red. So I thought these would be perfect for my gingerbread ornaments that I plan on making. For my gingerbread tea that I want to have. And it was a, if you spend so much money, you get a free surprise. Um stitch. So I got stitching with the housewives trucking along October. So um, this one I might pull just pieces out of and stitch pieces of it. But I don't know. I haven't decided. Um, then I had Abby, a top knot stitcher, sent me, let's see, or I guess I ordered from her. So her, um, it's not market, needlework expo maybe? I don't remember what it's called. The, the market type, online market that they just had. I ordered Halloween Quaker by Primrose Cottage. And um, the sweet potato floss that is called for for that. I think I already have the black, um, the onyx I already have. I already have the hassy brass. So um, I had that. And then Christmas Crow by Pixel Pixie Cross Stitch. This is going to be a an ornament for my middle daughter. She loves crows. So I plan on doing the white 
on his chest in like a metallic. And I'll probably do the words all one color. But he's going to be cute. She's going to die. She is so, so up her alley. So anyway, those actually ended up getting kind of lost in the mail. So they took a while to get here. They took a little detour, I think, to like Maine. So anyway, but they found it their way home. Then I had a really big old giant order from um, one, two, three, stitch. And so I ordered some floss, a couple of different kinds of floss. I ordered these actually go with the same chart. So let me show you. I ordered um, Nora Corbett's. Claire, she's one of the silhouette pieces, and these beads, and uh, a picture, or a petite treasure braid. I googled a conversion for a Krynic for it, because I like petite treasure braid better. I feel like it stitches easier. So I'm doing that for my daughter. I have the perfect, she wants it on a purple fabric. And so I showed her one of the under the sea fabric, the fabrics that I bought at Stitch West. It's like a purple with like the sparkle in it. And she loved it. So that's going to be a gift for her. Then I bought a couple of finishing fabrics for my bee pieces. This one's like B scaps. Technically, that's upside down. And then this one, let's see. This side is a little easier to see. It's got bees and flowers. So there's that one. I bought Gather Together Small Gathering Series by Hands On Design. I'm going to switch those blues to the same blues that I used in the new fall, I love fall piece. I got Gather Pumpkins, Gather Round Autumn, again switching those blues. I'll do the pumpkin, the gray blue color, and then the quilt, I'll do the darker blue, and kind of same with this one. So there's that. When I think of autumn, I bought, um, let's see, a couple of four different pieces of fabric. There's that, there's dove, there's stormy night, and um, like a platinum, which is kind of a gray tan color. Um, then I ordered Cricut Collections Wickety. I think she's so cute with her little, the frog balloon cracks me up. And I want to do her wings like all sparkly. I think that'd be cute. So, and then I got Happy Owlene by Autumn Lane Stitchery. I want to see if. Um, Erin will sign that for me. And then this one was on sale, which usually means that they're clearancing out. This is a cooler design. Um, it's called A Marriage Is. It's a beach themed. Um, the colors on the mock-up is different than what they show stitched a little bit. But I want to stitch this as a anniversary piece um, for me and my husband. So I'll probably start that um, in April and then work on it until our 25th anniversary, which will be 2027. Maybe I'll start it on the day we met. Because <laughs> I may need that extra like six months. And I need that extra six months um, to to get 
some more work on it done. So anyway, that is all the haul. It's a lot. It's a lot of haul. And then plans. I want to finish my sister's birth sampler for her daughter. Um, I need to catch up with my Sal, my stitch along with a frosted pumpkin. Um, so that I'll actually finish it on like the castle homecoming. These pieces are much more manageable. It usually takes me three or four days to finish the stitching depending on the pieces. Um, I want to touch all of my Halloween stitching. I'll probably have at least one or two new Halloween pieces. Um, this blue I bought to go with that Halloween. And I'm going to do like a little bit of an over dye of like a gray or black kind of grunge it up and stitch the happy Halloween on it. Um, so kind of touching all those Halloween pieces, I really want to finish my, my, um, uh, Sleepy Hollow. I have my, um, retreat coming up. It's in like, we talked about it. It's in like four weeks. So I have a lot going on. My daughter's birthday, my husband's birthday, fall break. Um, I have Friday off. So I'm going to go pick up my daughter from college and probably stop at Shepherd's Bush. Because, <laughs> you know, I need more stuff after buying so much stuff. But, um, there's a couple of charts there of, um, with I needle and thread that I want to get that I know that they carry them. So check that out. And there's a couple of flosses that I want to look at and see if I can find like for the autumn. When I think of autumn, I want to, I wonder if they have like a burgundy that goes into like a blackish kind of color for the word autumn. I think that'd be really pretty. And, um, a couple of other things. So anyway, I'm super excited about that. So there will be definitely more haul next time I see you. But until then, thank you for, um, joining me. If you'll keep my niece and my brother-in-law in your prayers, I'd appreciate it. And I will see you next time.